Okay, in putting up your own establishment, for example, restaurant, hotel, or any other establishment in the hospitality industry, it is very important for you to consider your food service equipment standards, the specifications, and the design considerations. Because it will add up to your profit because it will hinder um, complaints. Uh, that uh, we're in complaints will add up cost. But if you consider um, knowing or being knowledgeable about uh, the standard specification in the design consideration of what equipment you need to have in your establishment, it will add up and generate more profit to you and it will lessen cost. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Our topic for today is about the uh, food service equipment standards, specifications, and design considerations. Food service equipment standards and specifications. So there are different appropriate standards that the organization. The so such organizations are the National Sanitation Foundation, or the NSF, the Underwriters Laboratories, or the UL, American Gas Association, the EGA, the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, the ASME, and Environmental Protection Agency, Energy Star Program. The role of equipment specifications. So this is to ensure that the products have exactly the features required by the owner. And then next is to ensure that the equipment is manufactured or custom fabricated in accordance with industry standards and governmental regulations, and to ensure that equipment is installed properly. Standards for specification of equipment are derived from four primary sources. We have the uh, agencies or regulatory agencies that are mentioned in the uh, previous slide, the, also the health department, the manufacturer standards, the functional abilities and features decided by the buyer, and industry standards as reflected in the language of the consultant specifications. So the equipment can be manufactured in custom. So if the equipment is custom, of course, the functional capabilities and features should be from the buyer's uh, ideas and should be followed by the manufacturer. And as well as the industry standards. Now, it should be reflected in the language of the specifications of the equipment. Next, certification agencies. So I have mentioned different certification agencies from the previous slide. So these are their logos. So for the CSA, NSF, the UL, the ECL, and the CE. The materials used to make equipment must be able to withstand normal wear, corrosive action of food, cleaning products, and even insect or rodent penetration, and nothing that comes into contact with food can impart any odor, color, taste, or harmful substance to the food. And the equipment must be able to be installed, maintained, cleaned, and sanitized properly with reasonable effort. The equipment is performed as expected according to its purpose and the manufacturer's promises. A holding unit that has a temperature range of a certain number of degrees must indeed be able to hold food in good condition within the temperature range and so on. So the certification agencies look for the following um, characteristics. Okay? So it's not only the design, okay? but also the effective, effectiveness of the design equipment. Now how this equipment will affect or affect the operation of the establishment. You know? uh, in your um, situation, you are going to have your restaurant and hotel in your feasibility study. So again, as I said, it's very important to consider the specification, the design consideration that you will need. Or in order for you to have a smooth flow of operations. No? And here, uh, even the uh, sanitation, no? installation, and maintaining and cleaning the equipment, if 
the equipment is a standard, no? you will just exert reasonable effort in this activity. Okay? And of course, the uh, primary uh, factor, no? one of the primary factors uh, in putting up a restaurant is, of course, the quality of food. Now, if you have the right equipment to use as a storage facility, it will give um, right means of temperature and uh, it will uh, be resulted into quality food that you will serve to your customers. Okay. There are two types of equipment. The first is manufacturing. So I've said earlier that if the equipment that you will choose if it's fabricated or it is designed and custom, you need to really check if the supplier gives you the uh, specification that you want okay? for this custom equipment to function properly in accordance to what you have stated or of, on what you have requested. So manufactured equipment is selected from manufacturer's catalog of standard products. So this is an of equipment specifically. Okay. So for the uh, manufactured equipment, here, uh, here are the different details that should be included. The dimensions of the unit, the quantity of the unit to be purchased, the specific utility requirements, the materials used in the construction of the equipment, specific construction techniques employed, any relevant performance criteria, the desired features such as the need, and the relevant industry association of government. This is for the manufactured equipment. For the fabricated equipment, also you need to have the dimensions of the unit, the quantity of units to be purchased, the specific utility requirements of the equipment item, the materials used in the construction of the equipment, the specification construction techniques employed, any relevant performance, the design features, accessories, and the relevant industry association governmental factors. So as you observe uh, with the two equipment specifications, they have the same requirements. You know? Even if manufactured equipment or even if fabricated equipment. So all of the important details should be considered as part of your specification for the equipment. Okay. Next, what is the meaning of specification? So these are the descriptions service equipment and their engineering information and they can be found in manufacturers catalog and even in websites. Specifications can include various details such as model number, the capacity, the description of material used to services, the safety features and the measurement of dimension. Okay, so here is an example of specification. So you have different things and events. Okay. So here are the specs. So you have the model, the top view, the side view, the front view, okay? the dimension, utility information, the construction and building specification, the miscellaneous information. So all the important details about the restaurant needs and event equipment is stated in its specification. Okay? Food service equipment design consideration. So what are the considerations Equipment, what are the design considerations of those equipment that you are going to have? Okay. Uh, of course, you need to first know the construction materials. So the most common materials for constructing a piece of food service equipment are stainless steel, aluminum, galvanized iron, plastic, and wood. Okay. So as you observe, uh, as you dine in different restaurants and hotels, you now if you are I already have been in the hotel. You know? Observe the materials. You know? What are the equipment construction materials within it, uh, within uh, all of those uh, hospitality facilities that you have been? Okay. So next, uh, for the stainless steel, uh, the type should be type 302 to 304, work surfaces, etc. So these are the um, equipment that 
or the uh, parts or the materials that uses uh, work surface steel. No? Again, the work surfaces of the components and other aluminum. Uh, aluminum are mostly used for parts and wraps. Galvanized iron uh, is used for internal structures or counters. Plastics are are also used for decorative surfaces, functional surfaces, or uh, such as in storage shelving. Okay. Next, for the wood, uh, this can be found for uh, hard maple for bakeries, tables, and decorative trees. So, examples are on the picture. And then other include uh, tile, glass, storage surface, and plastic plants. Okay. Uh, for the wood and the other uh, tiles, here are the examples in the picture. So here's an example of a company that uh, provides metals here in the Philippines. So this is uh, Allied Metals, established in August 1965. Pioneer the publication of stainless steel from mutual kitchen equipment and the process established an industry in the Philippines. The relationships with the most widely used equipment manufacturers in the US is built. Built a technically competent organization for installation of service and treatment. So this is a look at Bulacan. Okay, I will also share to you the sanitation sanitation food operating food establishment. Okay. Again, requirements for operating food establishment. So this is from the Department of Health, Environmental Health Service, 1995, implementing rules and regulations, chapter C, food establishment and the code on sanitation of the Philippines. So the spec eight five six. First, construction and design maintenance. So, the equipment and utensils shall be so designed, fabricated, and installed so that cleaning is easy and they do not pose health hazards. Okay, so number 1.2 is lead, soldered containers, and sign piping and fixtures shall not be used. 1.3 surfaces in contact with food or drink shall be made of materials that are impervious, corrosion resistant, non toxic, okay, easily cleanable, durable, and resistant to heating. A three component sink shall be provided and used for manual washing and sanitizing of equipment and utensils. At least a two compartment sink shall be provided and used for washing. Kitchen equipment which do not require sanitizing for washing vegetables. So a three compartment sink includes the uh, wash, rinse, and sanitize section. Okay, the sink should used for manual washing and sanitizing shall be of adequate length, speed, and depth depth to permit the complete immersion of the utensils in. So this basket shall be of such design as to permit complete immersion of the utensils and equipment being sanitized first. So it's very important to consider the depth of the sink for to be able for all the equipment to be properly submerged on the water or into the water for its proper cleaning and sanitation. Okay. All utensils, equipment, and vegetable sinks shall be constructed of smooth, easily clean, non corrosive Designed as to resist denting and buckling in steel from the vent sinks. Okay. So, this is additional time for tableware, utensils, and equipment with noticeable cracks and steel shall not be used in food establishments. So if ever you observe uh, when you eat in different uh, restaurants and hotels, if even uh, if you observe uh, utensils that have cracks or dents, 
chemical uh, management, this should not be um, prevented or this should not be used because um, it may cause and um, uh, injury to get uh, because uh, the crack can be broken into pieces and then can it can be to food. You know? It can uh, it can be very dangerous for the customers. Okay? Sliding doors and cabinets shall be easily cleanable and removable. The runners shall be allotted at the end to permit removal of dust and debris. The bottom shelves or open these fixtures shall be removable to facilitate inspection, cleaning, and maintenance. Okay, so uh, this is very important for the sliding doors and cabinets to be removable for the cleaning and uh, checking inspect inspection purposes. You know? So from time to time, it's very important to the shelves and the cabinets you know, to um to make sure that everything is okay and everything is sanitized and clean, especially in restaurants. Okay. Okay, uh, this is the memorandum circular number 2020 series of 004. So about a guideline governing the operations of DOT accredited restaurants under the new form. So we are uh, being uh, affected until now by COVID-19 virus. So the restaurants and other hospitality industry facilities are uh, adjusting to the new normal you know, setup of uh, mandated by the IATF and the DOT. Okay. So today uh, we are MECQ. You know, and and they are um, mandating or uh, requesting a restaurant to provide a uh, alfresco dining area or out uh, for them to be able to operate. But if they do not have area for that, they will not allow to operate outside. Instead, they will uh, uh, operate in person capacity. Okay, seating capacity. Considering they have barriers between uh, uh, tables, uh, for uh, these barriers will uh, prevent virus to spread out from uh, person to person. Okay, and of course, uh, the guidance and restaurant configuration is set up. They should have provision of disinfectant masks. Uh, modify seating capacity or seating plans to allow one in for physical distancing. Okay. Uh, if seats are fixed, alternative shall be marked out. Mark out. Install transparent dividers. Okay. All. Menu shall be placed on the counter or other conspicuous area. Availability of signages and proper hygiene. Self circulation buffets and salad bars are highly prohibited. So these are the DOT uh, uh, guidelines for restaurant accreditation nowadays. Okay, so uh, another guideline on delivery services, frequent cleaning and sanitation of items used for food delivery, partners with online delivery platform services, and cashless payments methods are highly important. Okay, so for the... Um, Restaurants that do not have uh, alfresco dining, they are also allowed to have takeout services. And some restaurants are having their uh, delivery platform partners to have them deliver their products to, to customers, to guests. You know? And they also have the methods of cashless payment you know, to reduce interactions between uh, the cashier and the customers and vice versa to prevent the spread of the virus. Okay. Another um, guideline is for the safety measure, install hide sanitizing stations, provide information, materials on preventive measures in highly visible areas, kitchen floor markers, 
separate dishwashing sink and hand basin for kitchen staff, food preparation areas are strictly off limits to other non kitchen employees. So this is for the employees. Okay? So the operation uh, on their kitchen. So non kitchen staff staff are not allowed to enter the kitchen premises. Okay. Then next is about the uh, situation, current situation. Now, my example here, here is breakfast at Antonio. Uh, during COVID-19 pandemic, we are confirmed with the OT guidelines. We have QR codes for them. We have QR codes for health facilities. So uh, they allow 50% capacity restricted area, but now lesser uh, uh, percentage because of the need from the government. And then face mask container while eating. So we have all of that. Okay. And uh, I will uh, also reiterate what I have said about the fresco dining. They have that fresco dining at the back of the restaurant. They are able to accommodate guests uh, with uh, outside uh, or natural ventilation for the air to properly circulate and for the virus not to stuck up within a, uh, within a closed uh, area, closed space. Okay? So they have uh, this uh, large area outside for their address to them. Okay? So they are very compliant about the, uh, about the uh, DOT regulations you know, for them to be able to uh, operate and to serve their guests their uh, personal protective equipment you know, while having their operations. Okay? And they can, uh, with that, they are able to serve their customers at its best uh, food and service excellence. Okay? So I have here a video about the uh, actual, showing the actual food service equipment. So the title of the movie is best if you have time. Can you watch the video and you can see the different equipment that's used in the movie and you can relate our topic for Okay, here are the references of today's presentation. Thank you very much. I hope you learned some, something about the restaurant design consideration, the equipment specification that you will uh, use no, and you can uh, adapt in your study, in your feasibility study. Can you refer to the information given? on the PowerPoint presentation, okay. That's it for today. Thank you very much. Stay safe, everyone.